Oh, beautiful. What's going on, everybody? Happy, happy Monday. I'm going to scoosh my chair in here and kind of get my knees situated here real quick. All right. Hopefully your week's starting out pretty good. It's a long one for me. As you can see, I got stuff getting ready to go DC. If you haven't seen the video talking about the giveaway, that's here, plus some other stuff. Um, but I just want to hit a couple things. Up. If you guys ever buy one of these GoPro Hero thingies, you have a little card that goes inside here. And after talking to a few people, I guess the cards are easily to be errored out. Which causes you to reformat and you lose all your stuff. So I'd order some more. So if you guys ever do end up buying one, buy extra cards. <laughs> I just picked one up from Walmart now. And uh, I got a new mount for the car too coming in. So there'll be a lot of drive and talks and stuff like that when I'm driving the shows or whatever. Just so I can keep footage going to where I come home. I'm not completely drained. But alright, let's get to the topic. So two things I'm going to talk about here. The first one's Terra Peak that's offered by eBay. And the second thing is a little bit of hobby news. It's going to be a video clip with the owner from SGC talking about his uh, grading company. And it goes into, it was done by, I can't remember who was all on the video now with them. And I, I want to give the proper credit, but they're on there. I, I stole part of their video for this, but I want to get it out there so everybody can see it. They talk about their reasoning why they're not going to put subgrades on there but i'm going to talk about that a little bit after the video so i'm going to pull up Terra. i want to show you guys Terra peak here and this is something that you got to have for fuel for whatever you're looking at comps okay whether you're a buyer or seller right i'm going to use this for an example it's the lamello ball mosaic genesis true rookie I'm going to move this mic just a bit so it might get a little bit louder. All right. So, look, 27th, we had two sell for over 5,800. Now, if you go and look at this, you could tell they're shill bidded. But a lot of times, what's weird is that these shill bids get paid for somehow. Don't know how. So, as you can see, there's another one at 25th, 21st, um, 5,629th. You can also probably hear the pug just running down here, too. This car here is the same serial number. Check this out. $1,600, $1,000, then sells for $980. And this is off of Alt. This, uh, you guys can't see it. It's a little add-on piece through Google Chrome. So you can get that and go on here, and it'll tell you that what they paid for stuff. Then you see where one went for $1,890. Craziness, huh? Big gaps. But, you know, a lot of people at the last show had the Mellow Genesis. I, there was a PSA 10 there. There was one. Somebody picked one up. But nobody's knowing how to really look into the comps onto this. That makes you start thinking, right? All these keep saying, look, one sold for $4,000. You look at it, it, it just looks bad in the bids, all right? So what you want to do is go into Terra Peak. And what you do is you go into your eBay store, hit uh, Research Terra Peak, right? Same exact thing that I looked up for the Lamello here. Last 30 days, hit Research, right? Only three were paid for. This one here on January 29th has been the only one paid for for $5,600. That time it was a pop two. $980 paid for. And then this one for $1,890 was paid for. So we go back to the original page here. Not paid for. Not paid for. Not paid for. $4,000 one. Not paid for. $1,890 paid for. $5,600 paid for. 980 paid for. Terra Peak will only provide you the information once it is paid for. Now, if it does returns and stuff like that there, totally different scenario. Don't know how that works. But this is how a lot of times I check my stuff with like DC Sports. I look it up to see what all has been paid for versus what's still on my list that needs to be paid for to make sure there's no errors. I'm not too sure how many people knew about this. And I want to bring it to light because there's just a lot of craziness going on with shill bidding anymore. Items not being paid for. You're trying to do the guesswork. This takes the guesswork out. Very simple thing. I like it to a point because all these ended listings over here, 
you're going to find this stuff on 130 point and everything else. You don't know if it's paid for or not. But here, this is going to show you what was paid for on eBay. So just use that if you guys can to help you out. Especially if comps seem far off. You'll be able to look at it and be, and somebody could argue, well, the last four sold for over $5,800. I won $5,500 cash. No, dude, none of them uh, actually got paid for. Even a $4,000 one didn't get paid for. So what's that tell you? I mean, what's the value of a LaMelo, Genesis, the true rookie, PSA 10? I mean, kind of different out there. Just throwing it out there. But... Hopefully this helps some people out there um, with comps and everything. But I wanted to go over this. This was a perfect example of a card to use. And it just shows how many have showed they're sold, but they're not paid for. And, I mean, you could dig into it. You can see the same guy doing it and a lot of them bumping them up. But, you know, we got to use the tools we're given out there to make sure we're doing the best when we're wanting to buy or sell something. If you're a buyer, you may have to educate that seller politely if you can. Um, and if you're a seller, you don't want to be that dude high up in price or you want to be able to say, hey, check it out. Those comps are bad. You can show them shill bidding. They might understand or not. But you say, this is Terapeak. This shows what has been paid for. And you might have a little more ground with somebody onto it. But it's a good tool to have. Very, very good tool. All right. I'm going to pull this down here. Once I figure out where my mouse went to, there it is. All right, I'm going to cut right now. I'm going to go this video clip by SGC's um, owner. Very, very good topic with the splice piece out of it. Just listen to it, and then I'm going to come back. I want to talk a little bit about it, and I want to see what everybody else's thoughts are on it. So I'll be back probably about a couple minutes here. I don't think it's that long of a clip. Back to the subgrades, though, is, is that a, a, any progress, any ideas there? Because obviously that's going to be a question that uh, will continue to be asked until, no. you know, there's a definitive it's, it's answer. It's a question I have been fielding for a very long time, and the answer is simple. I just told you guys that, that if there's something you all want, I want to give it. And I will say there are a lot of people that ask that question about subgrades. I'm going to give a very honest answer. And I, I, the last thing I wanted to come off as, please, everyone, the last thing I wanted to come off as is me bad mouthing a, a different way of doing it. I'm just going to be honest with you and, and don't hold it against me. Okay. Here's the deal you don't grade cards on corners, centering, edges, and surface. That's, that's, that's not how we grade at SGC. There's a lot more to these pieces of cardboard than just the surface, corners, edges, and centering. For example, you know, the, the example I like to use is, you know, what, what do 4.5 edges look like, okay? Or what do the corners look like on a Colgan's Chips card that is a circle? It, it doesn't make sense. So in other words, guys, I could give you subgrades. We could just put in these four numbers, average them out, it's my machine spits out a grade with the algorithm that I programmed it to be. But the problem is the SGC experts who have been here for 25 years almost, who have trained every grader in our building, they wouldn't like that very much because that machine would be putting an 8 on a card that they believe to be an 8.5 or a 7 on a card that they believe to be a 9 based on the fact that those four subgrades just are not effective at calculating a card's overall grade. The truth is, guys, if I were to provide subgrades to all of you, they would not fit on the label because there would be 35 of them. That's how many factors these individuals have to take in and assess when, when looking at your cards and to hamstring them into four specific categories that then all have to spit out an accurate grade is just entirely, entirely ineffective in our in our opinion okay I, I, I do want to say this though yeah, the yeah. reason those questions come in is because collectors want to know why their cards graded the way they did and that is so unbelievably reasonable for god's sakes that someone wants to know why the card that they thought had a good chance of a 10 all of a sudden is coming back in an 8.5 uh, guys it's like welcome to the current state of the hobby we need to work on that don't we that is what SGC is going to be doing. 
But please understand, guys, that we you need to know more. And we totally recognize that. But I would be just totally kind of BSing all of you if I even floated the idea that we are going to be grading cards on corners, edges, centering, and surface. It's never from SGC. It's just not going to happen because we'd be lying to all of you and kind of going against what we believe to be the right way to grade these cards. I'm just here to say if I went into my grading team and I said that, I'd have a lot of resignation notices right here. And they would say, this kid that hijacked this brand has totally killed the integrity of what I helped build back in the year 2004. And we are back. All right. So really interesting hearing the talk onto this. And you could tell where the guy is kind of frustrated talking about. Now, if you think SGC back in the older days where they you kind of knew the point system. And anybody knows the old stuff was like 100, 96, 92, 88, all this stuff. They're saying you just can't grade a card on surface edges, corners, and centering. There's other factors. What are your other 30 factors is my question offhand because I'm really curious on this. I, I know a while ago there was something out onto it too, all their little points that you could get onto it. But, you know, I got it to a T. It would be hard to do all that stuff if their system's been working for so long. But how I, I also know how it translates over into their scale too because that's how they roughed it over. Um into the 10, 9, 5, 9, and all that. And if you ever go on a vintage, VCP vintage card, something, I forget what it's called, price guide, um, it'll show you on there, it'll say like SGC 9, 6, and it'll be like a PSA 9 or something, or uh, SGC 9. Or, yeah, SGC 9 onto it. And it kind of gives you an idea, oh, that's where this falls at. I think mostly... I'm not concerned about subgrades, really. If there was a way to where they could scan what was wrong, what they found wrong with the card, and attach it to it to when you looked it up by uh, the serial number, it could be open to anybody, too. You could be like, oh, that's what's wrong with it. Okay, didn't know that. But that's why there's a big difference between the grading companies completely. And this would explain why I know PSA 8s have gotten SGC 9.5s and 10s because they're looking at other areas. What they are, no idea. I think it would be good if they came out and showed what the other areas are. And I know that if somebody had a sheet before, it might still be out there. I really didn't dig in and look for it. If somebody knows where it is, plug it in a link or email me it, and we'll do a video on it. But... When you look at SGC prior to uh, COVID, easiest way for me to say it, the pricing with it and PSA and Beckett, they were all kind of, you know, competing in there. But the values were different. That's why we didn't send SGC. Companies got overwhelmed. SGC didn't at first. And guess what? Then they got overwhelmed. So prices all went up across the board. SGC, for the longest time, had more respect with their vintage than they did modern. Will it change? It could. Depends on the people out there buying. But if you don't, now with this here being a question mark, in my own opinion only, not knowing what the grading is and what their standard is across the board with what all they're looking at, versus, you know, okay, this is what I got, PSA 10 here. Should this be an SGC 10 here? Probably not. You know, I, I don't know. It's just really odd when I start thinking about it across the board that, you know, the card companies are not grading the same across the board. Which, again, will affect the value. So we got PSA does have 0.5s, but guess what 0.5 they don't have? The 9.5. Um, th there's all kind of things out there like that with, between Beckett, SGC, and so on and so forth. I do like it now. If you guys have any economy orders out of PSA, this is just an example. I know we're going a little off tangent here. And you're like, man, my stuff's in QA2. It's still sitting there. It hasn't shipped. Up. Grades popped four days ago. They're backlogged. They still have to scan it all out before they ship it now. So you pay for it. Grades pop. Then they're scanning it. 
So it could be four or five days till you might have another order pop and get it, you know, shipment date before you do on this. Just it's just going to happen. But if we're taking that much time to scan the exact card in, I don't see what the harm is to show what that grader saw on that card either. The other piece, like with PSA using, um, was a Genement to scan their stuff in. I'm wondering if they're logging the spy serial number in, and that if I would want to resend something in, crack it out, see if I can get a better grade, different serial number, it picks up. It's like, oh, this card's already been graded. This is the grade it received. Instead of sending in the case, seeing, hey, let me see if I can get it bumped or not. I, I don't know. Kind of odd, huh? But I wanted to bring this stuff up to see what everybody thought. One, a little bit of knowledge with Terra Peak, how it works with uh, eBay and stuff like that. One of the good things about, you know, with eBay, even with the fees and all that stuff. Um, and the second part, with what the SGC owner or CEO, whatever, how, I forget how he phrased himself on to, talked about. And I got it. You get a lot of pressure. He's all about wanting to do what everybody else wants, the customer wants, but they can't do this. Okay, I kind of got it, but can we change the label? It just looks god ugly to me, that label. It, it's just horrible, horrible. And I just am not a fan of it. Uh, and I think also right now people want transparency. That we're spending all this bigger money on grading cars. Why did it get this grade? I got it. There's other companies out there doing it and stuff like that there. But why can't top three do it? Talking about he has guys 20, 25, 30 years in the company. It's been doing it all this way. If they change it, he'd have an uproar and probably people quit. Okay, got it. It's your company still. And I understand you got to run it and do whatever you got to do. But let's bring it out to public what you're looking at. What are these points that all have to be looked at? Because it's going to be different than what PSA, Beckett have been doing. You know, looking at their stuff versus, you know, any other company out there. Now I'm like really curious. But like I said, there was a document out there years ago. And I wish I still had it. I'm going to have to dig in some of my older laptops. I think I saved a copy of it. But other than that, guys, take care. Have a good week. I will definitely see you all Wednesday night live at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to be trying to get a couple more different videos out this week that I've had some ideas with. But other than that. Have a good week. Catch y'all next video.